friends, welcome back to a new episode of Two Idiot Girls. Woo! Woo! First one of the new year. Happy New Year. How are we feeling, team? I'm feeling good, feeling fresh, feeling ready. Don't forget, we're going on tour. Yes. We are currently slated, me forgetting actively, forgetting words as I'm saying them. We're uh, going on tour the week of the 11th. the 11th and we're hitting four California cities. I know all the rest of you were like, what the fuck? Why aren't you coming to Ohio? We will Maybe. later. <laughs> we will later, but first we got to do our baby tour. So if you're in the area or in the market or just want to come see us and Kiki with us live, we are going on tour. So make sure you guys get your tickets. Now we reopened them so that people could cop them. VIP is also still available. We added some more to each show. So all of you can come and meet us. Anyways. You can get your tickets at twoidiotgirls.com. It's always in the description box. But please come see us. Yeah, come see us if you would like to. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. Very nervous, but very excited. Yeah. But most of all, I'm just excited to see y'all. So more than anything. To meet y'all and see your beautiful faces. It's going to be so much fun. Make sure you come see us on tour. VIP is also available. Yeah, so we're going on tour, so make sure you come see us. It's going to be super fun. If you can and you would like to, we would love to see you. to San Diego, Anaheim, Los Angeles, and then San Francisco. Woohoo! Woo. Make sure you come see us. Anyways, <laughs> how's your new year going? Mine's going pretty good so far. I think so, too. It feels too. exciting to have a new start. I agree. Even though I ended it on a high, I'm going to start a new high you i know? agree yeah when i was building my little end of the year video montage i got so emotional me too i was very emotional about it because this is a really long year um but with a lot of really exciting things yeah it felt like 20 years packed into one year. yeah when we we're like can you believe that happened this year we yeah like, that's no. bonkers yeah but i think it's been a very exciting successful incredible year and it's just been very memorable. So I think that's why it made me so emotional. Yeah. Cause I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe all the things that we did this year and all the things I got to do with all of you this year and with two idiot girls. It's been so fucking awesome. I know. I'm super excited. So I'm very excited for a very exciting 2023. I hope you all are too. I hope you're looking forward to it. And if not, and if you didn't have a really great year last year, clean slate, brand new year. So let's start it on a high note, like coming to see us on tour. What better way to kick off the new year? <laughs> Or just set your intentions, set your good vibes, your good intentions. Those are always good too. Yeah. I love doing that. So for our first episode of season three and of 2023 for two idiot girls, Mm -hmm. we wanted to open it up and have you all ask us questions because we've had quite a bunch of new people show up. Yes, we have. And some of you are late to the party. Some of you have been here since day one. We love you all the same, but we feel like a good refresher for the start of the new year was a good move. I think so. I think so. I know. Yeah. So we're going to answer your guys' questions. Okay. So this first one's from Ari. She said, what are you bringing into 2023 and what are you leaving in 2022? What am I bringing? That's new. No, right? it just says, what are you bringing? Like, what are you bringing with you into 2023? And what are you leaving behind? I know. You said new. It doesn't have to be new. Well, I just mean like it has to be fairly new, right? I don't know. To discover that you no longer want to do one thing, but you want to do something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, what I want to leave in 2022 is being mean to myself. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it, but I want to leave yeah, that behind. Yeah, that's a good one. And bringing with me my can-do attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring... I'm squid? Bringing, <laughs> squid for sure, obviously. Even if I did, I'm going to leave squid in even, even if I didn't want to bring him, he would stow away and be and end up with me. But of course, I'm going to bring squid. No, I think I'm going to bring, I'm bringing therapy Ooh, into the new year. That's a good one. I that was started, new for you. Yeah, that was new for me. I started therapy this year. It's been fucking amazing. I, after my first couple sessions, I was like, God damn, I should have been doing this a long time I ago. Know. Um, yeah, I didn't I get to fucking, see my therapist all of December. And then when I saw her this past week, I was like, it's been a long <laughs> I know I didn't see mine the first three weeks because I was out of town Me too, yeah. and stuff. And so I didn't see her the first like two and a half weeks. And then I saw her right before Christmas. She was like, I can probably fit you in before Christmas. I was like, I really need you to, I need to see a girl. 
Um, and we met up and she's fucking incredible. I love my therapist. Um, but I'm definitely bringing that into the new year. Um, prioritizing like breaks I'm going to bring into the new year. I'm leaving, Ooh. leaving behind this, like, or hopefully I'm leaving behind. It's like that toxic productivity. Yeah. 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 Like the fact that I need to, f- I like, if I'm not moving, who's holding the house up is how I always yeah. feel. Which so is I'm important to leave that, that behind. you all hear. Cause I've seen so many fucking TikToks are like, the only difference between me and you is that I get my ass up and I go do the work. Yeah. That's toxic productivity. And it's that's, all fucking white people. And it's also, it's also a capitalist mindset yeah. and it's not real. It's man-made and it's not necessary to live a happy, successful, financially fruitful life. Like you don't have to be doing that all the fucking time. In fact, I'd venture to say that if you continuously do that, it can be a hindrance to your productivity, honestly, because you're just overworking yourself all the time. So I'm hopefully leaving behind that. That's my goal. (laughs) As a Virgo, it's very hard for me to let that go. Um. So yeah, I'm going to try to leave that. What about you? You said you're going to leave behind being mean to yourself. Love yeah. that. I think that's a great one. And then what am I bringing into the new year? My therapy. <laughs> it's the same thing. I, I was going to say love. <laughs> Kisses. <laughs> Smooches. <laughs> Dude, one of my favorite YouTube videos we ever did was like, it was like, how, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah. And Donovan was like, what do, What are the ingredients to a cake? And we were like, oh, flour, <laughs> sugar, and <laughs> smooch. <laughs> I don't freaking know. But yeah, I would always say I'm leaving behind being mean to myself. This year, I really want to focus on being really, really nice to myself. I feel like I had a lot yeah. of growth and healing. This That's past true. Year. I, I want to leave healing <laughs> back there. <laughs> Leave that I'm back there. done with that. I, I don't want to think I about did it. that already. No, literally. I feel that leaving healing behind me. Well, and you conquered it. I'd yeah, say it could healing. Be, so many like eras I was in this year and everyone has a healing girl era. I'm all none like mine. None quite like mine. So, well, you did it. So yeah. So I want to leave onto the next healing part behind me and then onto I, the next phase of yeah, healing. And I just want right? to continue to grow. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I think that's a great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I said you're bringing love to the new <laughs> Smooches. Dude, we were giggling about this, but did you guys do the 12 grapes under the table? I didn't do my grapes. Drew doesn't need to do the 12 grapes under the table because she's already in love and loved by someone. That's true. Those of us single girls, we got to get under the table. And then my therapist told me each grape you make a wish so because the 12 <laughs> grapes are supposed to represent a month of the year. Cause yeah. Grapes. yeah. And Teresa, did you eat the first one and go love, <laughs> love in January? <laughs> <laughs> love as soon as possible. Literally, primarily, I would prefer January. <laughs> but, you know, give or take. OK, so I'll give or take. I mean, I'll give you till the spring, but I would prefer January. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, did. Who did the grapes? I did the grapes. I thought it was I really wish I funny. did grapes, not for the love part, but just in general for the good luck. I wish yeah. I had done it. I didn't have any grapes with me though. No, Rip. you were a little like lump on your couch. All day I was yesterday. yesterday. I laid face down for 24 hours straight. I literally went to sleep at eight 30 and I set an alarm for 11 58 so that I would make sure I woke up. <laughs> Jimmy and Donna were running around. Well, get the grapes, get the grapes. It was a mess. Yeah. Okay. Someone. Okay. I'll say who it is. Patrick. He wants the tea on the computer lab story. Listen, all right. <laughs> First of all, I cannot tell the computer lab story, and this is why. It has to do with minors. We were all minors at the time. And the actions that were being done were not things that are appropriate for minors. Do with that what you will. But like I'm saying, like at the time we were all minors involved, obviously. Talking about it now as a full grown, whole ass adult, it would just be weird. The story itself is fucking nuts, but that's just because <laughs> that's our life in a nutshell. Yeah. Like I told you, remember, you guys remember this. I told you I'm always in the wrong place at the wrong time. I feel like that's and like this, a, a family curse of ours. Yeah. And this, and by proxy, I'm involved, yeah. even though I didn't want to be, and I didn't ask to be as a witness. Yeah. yeah. I just, I'm always either a witness or, or by proxy an accomplice, like an unwilling accomplice to things. So I will never tell you that story on this podcast. However, if you ever meet me in real life and we become friends, I'll tell you the story. Okay. Let's make that deal. Like if we ever become besties for realsies in real life and you're ever at my house and we're key king, then I'll tell you the computer lab story. 
The other than that, uh, you guys will never hear it. Just know that it would knock your socks off if you heard it. So I'm sorry about that, but I cannot share that story. Same with the story. Well, a lot of people were like, why doesn't Jason tell the story? That story you could tell. It just might implicate people in real life. Yeah. And that's why we don't want to tell it. And I guess who it has to do with my healing era people. Yeah, exactly. Leaving them behind me. And it's it, it, that's why. It's literally because we're leaving it behind. It's really funny. Though. But that's another story that would blow your fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> if you heard that story. That one's just nothing short of hilarious and honestly insane. The one that happened to me is traumatic. Yeah. And also it's well, mine's traumatic in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Mine's traumatic. Yeah. They're traumatic in different ways, yeah. but like my story about the computer lab, like that story is just, it's so awful that it's funny. Like yeah. it's just, it's so fucking unbelievable that it's funny. Yeah. And, and hers is, I guess the same. It's just it's on the so opposite awful. end. It's yeah. Unbel- yeah. <laughs> and it just kept going, dude. That one just like, that would implicate people in the real world, like right now, right now. And that's why we won't tell that one. But yeah. Okay. Allison asked, do you have any plans to get matching tattoos? Yes. Yes. We do. I don't know if we'll say what they are until no, we get them. No, they're really, one's really cute and one's really funny. That's true. And they both have to do with our parents. Yeah. We're going to, with our brother, we're going to do a tattoo for our mom and then one for our dad. But yeah. we're not going to tell you what they are. Yeah. When we get them, maybe we'll tell you. But yeah. the one for my dad is so fucking funny. One of my best ideas yet. So yeah. Like so. Yeah. And then, and then are we getting one for each other? Yeah. And we had an idea, but we, we changed it a bunch of times. I know. Like, I think the first one we said birth flowers. Yeah. But like now all my, I want all my tattoos to be tribal. So I, I don't know. know how I would do that one. Um, And then we said bun heads, but. We've outgrown that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm so glad we didn't do it. Same. Because then I'd be like, ugh. Same. You know? Same. Yeah. I don't know. That'll do it. We're undecided on each other, though. Yeah. We have lots of moving parts. We could still do birth flowers, I guess. Yeah. We could. Yeah. They're, like, I want to get white girl tattoos, but that's too much of a white girl tattoo for me. I don't want any white girl tattoos. So no, I know. Why. So that's why, why would we do that? Well, one? I would I would do it if it could be worked into a tribal. I would do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that both of us liked sea creatures because then that would be easy to get tattooed. Well, I told you I'm going to get one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You told me that. I know, but that's not my favorite animal. I'm just saying like- No, I know, but I'm saying for there's each only other. certain ones I like. Yeah. I know. And the animals that we both like, I would never get tattooed on myself. Well, which one do you like? I like pigs. I'll get a pig tattoo for you. Don't. <laughs> like a little cartoon guy. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? If you do that, that's not for me. Who's it for then? I don't know. I just don't want it to be for me. Okay. <laughs> I'll get a little squid. That's cute. Right here in the part of my stomach that he tried to <laughs> rip off. <laughs> okay this one's from adrian she said what is your island's order island's order she said I for a go- second i thought you were saying like the islands and i was like what like- <laughs> she said i go long border or shore bird with a tortilla soup and fries with a ranch dude their tortilla soup hits so fucking hard what Does did they islands- put in that thing i think islands only exist in california and then everyone's gonna be like no it doesn't we have them over here no i think it does i think it's a it's a, i think it's a South- southern california chain mm. to be honest mm. But uh, great question. Quality question. Here's my answer. I get a big wave. I know it seems basic, but it just hits so hard. Yeah. Big wave, medium. Onions for sure. What and kind then, of bun are we going for, brother? Always wheat. Yeah. Always wheat. Always. Always Do wheat. Do they toast it with the butter? The way, listen, <laughs> the way that I, you know what's so funny? I had that for dinner last night. Oh. So we like, ate you know. pizza and we were like, we should have gotten islands. Dude, I got islands. Oh. I got islands. Me and Billy ate islands for dinner on New Year's Eve. Uh, so yeah, big wave and then fries. And then if I'm feeling extra hungry, I'll get fish tacos and we'll share them. Ooh, okay. Because they're super fucking fire. The fried ones, yeah. The fried ones always. And then if I'm feeling extra, 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 extra hungry, I'll get a Kona pie too. Ooh. Them shits hit so hard and it doesn't hurt my stomach. I don't know they why. They used to do like a lava cake. That one was They insane. still do that one. Oh, they do? Yeah. The lava cake's good, but that Kona pie, something about coffee flavored things in a dessert and it has an Oreo base. Yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. 
Anyways, that's my islands order. I get, I used to get big wave. This is when I ate meat. Yeah. I big, get a big wave or I would get the tiki tenders, dude, <laughs> yeah. in the ranch. But now I get the impossible burger. It's pretty fire. With yeah. No aioli. Billy, Billy used to always, um, get, he gets the huli huli, which is like a chicken sandwich, Okay, which I actually tried for the first time yesterday. Cause I was like, is that a chicken sandwich? And he goes, yeah, it's so good. So I fucking I tried it. He used to, did he used to get a shorebird too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He used to get a shorebird, but now he gets the huli huli. The tortilla soup is nuts too, bro. The tortilla soup could be a meal all by itself. <laughs> honestly, if it had more like With the little chips. Yeah. If it had more like substance in it, it could be a, a yeah. full meal, but like as an app fire, we used to go, we usually go for chips and guac though. Their protein platter is fucking Dude, flames nuts. too. Oh man, that's so good. You one just like time, pour everything over and just mix it all together. Yeah. Ah, so one good. One time I ate the chicken and it made my throat swell up. So one time I ate the guacamole from there and I got violently sick, like food poisoning. Yeah. This is what she did. I fell asleep in the living room and then Drew went and sat in the family room. This is like at like two in the morning. Well, okay, hold on. <laughs> let me give, let me give more context. I felt sick. I don't like throwing up. It scares me. This is me. when we're, I'm in, I think I'm like a sophomore. So you're easily a freshman in high school. Yeah. So I'm feeling sick. I get scared. I go to the bathroom, try to sit and go to the bathroom, like go and poop. Doesn't work. My stomach still feels like queasy. It feels like knives, which is how I know I'm going to throw up. I'm just trying to fight it. So then sometimes if I change my scenery, then I won't have to, I won't feel sick anymore or nauseous. Like, you know, when you get like, almost room sick. Like it's just too warm in your room and your yeah. bed and just everything Smells feels gross. Yeah. Like your room, yeah. Yeah. So you just go and lay on the couch or something. That was what I did. I tried to go to the bathroom. It didn't work. So I went to the couch. I laid down. I finally fell asleep. As soon as I fell asleep, I threw up. I like sat up and I had to throw She's up. She's sleeping in the family room. And I'm in the living room. And I don't, I didn't know you were in the living room. No, I know. But I was like, <laughs> I had accidentally fallen asleep out there. Yeah. And then I woke up to the sound of her throwing up in the other room. And then I was screaming and running yeah. to my mom. And then my dad had to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> my Which dad had to vacuum it up at five in the morning. Cause then my dad had to take me to a volleyball tournament that day. <laughs> he was so mad. <laughs> Best dad ever. Best dad ever. And he told me, if you play good, we'll go to Del Taco. And I was like, say that. <laughs> Dude, and the ranch at Islands is nuts. Do you like the ranch there? I don't like ranch really at all. No, so. you get the mustard, huh? Honey mustard. Yum. <laughs> Nalina wants to know, do you have other names that you were almost going to name squid? Love you. We love you too. Yes, I do. Um, Chowder. Chowder was one of them. Uh, we had beans. Beans. Beans was another one. We had also had like really human names. Kevin. Yeah, like Kevin or Gary. Like Greg. Greg. Yeah, something with a G was really calling to me when we had him. Like Gary was a big one. Like Gary the snail. Um, it was either going to be aggressively human or an object. So I'm like couch you know what i mean like stuff like that chair was chair like we were just thinking of of silly little names and then we started trying to think of animals and i remembered i think i forget what we were i had thought i had thought of the name squid a long time ago when we were convinced we were going to get a different kind of dog mm -hmm. and then after we like my family was there the whole time we were trying to decide too like it took us a while to pick the name. And then I remembered squid. And then we, we looked at him and we were like, yeah, that's it. Like he even looks, like he just a is a squid. When you look at him, like that's literally a squid in the living room. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we almost named him like Gary or something, which that's I, when I came over. I was like, where is he? Cause he always greets me at the front door. And he was yeah. There. Yeah. He he's was the bellman. <laughs> yeah. He's the doorman. <laughs> dude. Yeah. He's the, the greeting committee. That's what he always does. He yeah. loves to go. Okay, this next one's from Bella. She said, how do you feel about all of the hate that the IE gets? I went to UCR for college, and I feel like when I tell people that, they always have something low-key classes to say. Well, I I mean, I'll say this. When I was in college, nobody fucking knew where yeah. the Inland Empire was. So, like, this is what would always happen. They'd say, where are you from? I'd say California. And they go, where? And then I go, like, SoCal. Where? you know, like probably like an hour outside of LA. And then they go nowhere. Like they just really want to know the name. So I'd be like, I'm from Corona. And they'd be like, I don't know where that is. Why'd you make me do that? <laughs> Why'd you make me go down the list when I knew for a fucking fact you didn't know anything about yeah. the IE. So like only IE people know about the IE. If not, 
that means they're from San Diego or Orange County or LA. Yeah. And if they look down, it's for sure a classist thing. It's like a, yeah, kind of a racist every time thing it's too. a racist thing too. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Especially if they're from Orange County, Yeah, like, which is funny because we were born and raised in Santa Ana, California, which is technically Orange County, but like they never claim Santa Ana. No, they're like because Newport, because they're racist. Yeah. They never claim Santa Ana, which is Anaheim. Yeah. yeah, or like sometimes people will be like from Santa Ana, but they'll say they're from Orange. Yeah, which is like it's literally because they're ashamed to say they're from Santa Ana. I'm not. So like that's where I was born and raised. Yeah, and then we moved to Corona when we were I was in fifth grade, so mm-hmm. I was ten. We moved to Corona, and then we were raised here essentially until we were of age to go to college. Yeah. When I went to college in Oregon, I would tell everyone I was from LA or Orange County. And then one time <laughs> I, I said, never did. One time I said LA. Well, cause like having to explain Corona was so yeah, annoying. Yeah. Then they'd be like, what part? And I'd be like, Oh no, there's parts of LA. Like I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah. so then I started saying Corona when I got hired onto orientation services, which is funny too, because a lot of people that are specifically from Portland, if you say, Oh, I'm from Portland, they go where? Yeah. And if you say, oh, I'm from Beaverton, they're all, don't say Portland, then say Beaverton. Which is so weird. It's such a weird <laughs> gatekeepy thing. Don't lie. But like, that's like, that's why I said the 951 girls, they 909. Know. 909. We rise up. I was going to say 949, but I think that's more, I that's think that's Orange, Orange County. County. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Obviously, now we live in LA because of work, but I'll always be an IE girl at heart. And it's funny because there are lots of influencers that are from the IE. Yeah. And it's funny because I, I, we always find each you other. Sniff them out. Yeah. You just feel the vibes. Yeah. Um, even though we were born and raised in Santa Ana, like I still consider us from the IE because that's where we were raised in our really formative years yeah. was in the IE. I identify so. more with being from the Inland Empire for sure. Yeah. Same. So that's where we're from, even though like, even when we're at work stuff, like we go to parties or events or whatever, like we always know when there's an I IE love girl. when people come up to us and they're like, I'm also from, I'm from Rialto. I'm like, no way. Yeah. They're that. like, I'm from Redlands, yeah. right? San Bernardino. I love that. Corona. There's like, not enough of us out there. We need to leave. I.e. girls rise up. Uh, I do. I have experienced the slander. I do also believe it's rooted in classism, also racism. Um, because the only people that really can discriminate against it are people from Orange County mm. or L.A. or San Diego. I mean, San Diego is its own county, right? Yeah. 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 So. I mean, I've never had problems with people from San Diego. If there were ever any, any sort of weird racist vibes like that, it's always from Orange, Orange County. County. So, every time. So What are you going to do? There isn't a lot to do out there no. in the um, Inland Empire. Like, no. if I meet people and they're like, where should we go? Like, should we go to the Inland Empire? I was going, no. <laughs> you don't need don't to go need. there. You can go to the movies. <laughs> Yeah. The, well, that's, that's like what I like about it now that I do this for a living. It's very, it's very like normal. Yeah. It's I love chill. that. Yeah. yeah. Cause now that I live in LA, it's very different from yeah. where I grew up. I so, agree. okay. This one's from Suzanne Roxanne. She said, is there anything off limits for you to talk to each other about, or can you legit talk to each other about anything? No, not necessarily. I would say it's not off limits, but there's stuff we don't talk about with each other. Right. Is that your thing? <laughs> We already know what it is. I know. And that's, that's on both accounts. Like, sure. You don't want to hear it. And I don't want to tell you. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We're talking about, should we tell them? No. (laughs) Do you want me to skip that question? No, that's fine. Um, (laughs) okay. This is what I will say. This is what I will say. Now we're getting all fucking annoyed and (laughs) like mad. Like we're actually talking about it. I like me feeling like I'm being cornered to talk about it. (laughs) Anything having to do with my intimate life, we don't talk about. And it's not just because it's not the well, same she, with me. Yeah. That's not true. You tell me things all the time. No, I don't. Yes, you do, dude. Like what? You want me to say it? And then I'll leave it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I don't care if you tell me. I just like never want to share I my own. Personal. And I don't want to hear it. That's my point. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That, that's what I said. Other than that, like we, we talk, talk about, about everything. everything, anything and everything. But like. It's on both accounts. Like she doesn't want to hear it and I don't want to tell her. And it is what it is. Like, (laughs) it's fine. Uh, That's just how, how it be sometimes. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I'm a natural overshare. So yeah. So she tells me a lot more about stuff like that than I tell her, but that's just because that's how our personalities are. Like 
You know what I mean? Like that's, that goes in general with like anybody. I think it's just because I know Billy so well. That's what that too. It. Yeah. It's like, it's like a you're little, if it was yeah, like that's, a random, no, that's true because in when I would college, date in college, yeah. yeah, I would tell her everything. It's literally just cause I know Billy and that's I don't true. Hear about that. That's very true. That's a new thing for us mm-hmm. because when I dated in college, I would tell her everything. Yeah. And I didn't care. Yeah. And she doesn't care. And, and I don't care. Because if she it's like a friend of mine. I don't want to hear about <laughs> yes. And then she's like, that's great. Cause I don't want to talk about it. There yeah. you go. <laughs> that's true. And love right there. So I could tell her anything about my, even if, even if you weren't gay, like even if you, you were doing it with men or hanging out dating men, then I would, I wouldn't care. I don't did care if she see tells the me picture. Speaking of men that I'm attracted to, did you see the picture of Curtis Connor kissing Hassan? What a picture. I saw it. That I one, liked it. I liked that one's going to carry me to the new year until <laughs> <laughs> 2024. That's the love I was wishing for last night. <laughs> <laughs> Eating your grapes. I hope Hassan kisses Curtis. <laughs> And it came true already. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, we can talk literally about anything. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. Other okay. than that, yeah, l- literally everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just laughing. Probably a little too much. Some might say. <laughs> like I Some would, might say, like, some of the stuff we talk about, they're like, I could never tell my sister that. No. Like, I would rather hear her talk about, like, if she had diarrhea or something. Yeah. Than anything. And she does hear that. Intimate. I will call her and tell her. Even Dates. if she just... <laughs> Hey. Even if she doesn't want to hear it, mm. I make sure she knows. And then I call Drew and I'm like, guess who I have a crush on? <laughs> so different strokes, you, you know? Go. Okay, this one's from Yolanda. She said, my best friend and I are so excited to meet you ladies in just a few short weeks. Same. I would really love to know do's and don'ts when meeting you two. I just want to respect your guys' boundaries 100%. Like, our hugs okay, you know? That's so sweet. This is so sweet. And also a great uh, for everyone to listen to. That's if you true. meet us outside of uh, the mean greet. Like. Yeah, this is what I will say. Um, a mean greet, I don't care. If we want to, if you want to hug, I'm super okay with mm-hmm. that. I find that very, very sweet that you're asking yeah. in order to respect boundaries. I love that. Um, in mean greets, like controlled environments where it's expected that I'm going to meet a bunch of people and hug them and take pictures with mm-hmm. them. I don't care at all. I always think it's really sweet when people are like, can I give you a hug? Like when they ask, I always think that's really sweet. But again, if it's a meet and greet, I don't get upset if you just assume you want a hug. I, I don't care in yeah. that sense because I'm prepared for it. When I don't like being touched is when I'm in public and I don't know you and I'm either grabbed and or touched or groped against my will. That's when I don't like it. Yeah. Or um, followed. Because a lot of the times, yeah, people think we can't see them, but yeah, we and, can. And I've told you all that before. Like, don't, please don't take pictures of me from afar, especially if I'm with family. Like, I am more than willing to take pictures with you if you just come up and ask me. I will a hundred, probably like nine times out of ten, I'll say yes. Um, I've hardly ever said no. If I did, it was either because I was in a hurry mm-hmm. or because I was with people that aren't comfortable being photographed, and I just didn't want to make them uncomfortable. So, you know, that's me being respectful of other people's boundaries too. But in terms of meet and greets, I'm super okay with hugs. I'm super okay with pictures, obviously, because that's like the whole point. So we get to meet you guys, but I do love that you asked. I think that's really sweet. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Dason's a big toucher. So like, well, here I like to touch. Other <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People. That's what I mean. That's what I, I mean. don't like when people touch me, Same. but in a controlled environment, I'm expecting to be touched. I'm okay. With yeah. That's, touched. that's yeah. exactly like when I did my mean greet at VidCon, I gave out lots of hugs. That's super okay mm-hmm. with me. I don't care, but I love that you asked. I think that's really sweet. And we can't wait to meet you. Yes. It's going to be so fun. Okay, this next one's from Caitlin. She said, I need to hear more about your love of the MCU and Disney. I'm talking characters, movie scenes, <laughs> songs, costumes, crushes, ships, and maybe some hot takes. Okay. That's a Dang. lot. Dang. Okay. Well, okay. Well, what's, your, what's your favorite MCU movie? <sighs> this is Marvel Cinematic Universe, for those of you that don't know. Um, I would say right now it's uh, Wakanda Forever. Okay. Is in my top spot. Number one? Right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, you said movie, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think what mine is. Thor. I like Thor Ragnarok. That's my favorite one. That's a great one. Yeah. That's a great choice. I would say Wakanda forever right now because it was like so well-rounded the movie as a whole. Mm-hmm. It was so good. What's your favorite character? Of all the MCU? Yeah. Or characters. I like Loki. 
Yeah. I like, I mean, out of the shows, I, Loki was my favorite show. That was mine too. That Loki one, was my and then I show. liked uh, the Scarlet and Witch. And Loki, and, and then, Scarlet Witch. and WandaVision was yeah, right Wanda underneath that. really good. And uh, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It was really good. I know, but some people really didn't like it. They said no, it was boring, but like, I, I, it's a slow burn in the beginning, but I fucked with that no, show. It was really I good. thought it was really good. Um, I like, um, who did I say? I said Loki. I like Yelena. I think she's amazing. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, hold on. Maybe this is a hot take, but Black Widow is one of the really great ones. The movies? Yeah, I know. Or the movie? Yeah, I know. It was a really lot of people good. were saying though that they didn't really fuck with it. it I don't really think it was that. I think it was like almost too little, too late. Yeah. Like, why that's have it fair. come out after she died? That's fair. And why do it just to introduce other people when, like Yelena and the Red Guardian? Yeah, and, when she's and the other lady. one of the original ones. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. No, I actually, I do have a, an actual hot take, but I'll, I'll talk about it after we're done in, with our shows and stuff. Oh, okay. Pick your favorite characters. And I love the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. I would say the Scarlet Witch. I would What's say. What's the character I want to kiss the most? That was, wasn't in there. But I'm just <laughs> no more. You want to kiss him? No, I would I know, say, <laughs> I would say he's one of my new faves. Yeah. He was bitching. I like he's him. He's fucking lot. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say M'Baku. Great one. Okay. You're just naming characters from the movie. Uh, well, I'm thinking in terms of my favorite one right now. Did you pick any of your favorite characters? Well, I like the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. I also like Yelena. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if that's all you can think about, we can move to the next no, one. No, I'm trying to think like all the originals. Like I like Thor. Yeah. I really like Thor. Um, him and Loki are good, but like I, I really fuck with Thor. Yeah. Like his his whole arc has been really cool. Like not once have I wanted to kill him. I know. Like you do with all, a lot of the other characters. I know. Like every other character. I like, and I like Spider Man. Oh, Spider Man, yeah. Oh, and Ant Man. I really love Ant Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, But like, like Iron Man and Captain America, I've liked and oh, not liked. So. Yeah, like you want to kill them at one point because yeah. you're so fucking annoying. Um I like Bucky. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That was Jason's white boy of the month for yeah. a while. Not Sebastian Stan, just Bucky. Yeah, just Bucky. <laughs> but Bucky specifically in The Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah. No, wait. Is The Winter Soldier the one where they capture him? No, that's Civil War. Civil War, yeah. Civil War is a great one. That's I, one I That was a hyperfixation movie of mine for a while. Yeah. Like anytime I was like, what are we going to watch? I would put that movie on. Winter Soldier is when he's chasing them. No, I know. Yeah. So that's why I said, no, the it's he, Bucky is better and more prominent in Civil War. No, but he's sexier in Winter Soldier. I disagree, bro. Well, his hair's long in the Winter Soldier. I know. So it's like that in, in Civil, Civil War, War too. too. Yeah. That's the one where he's in the little fucking pond and they're like, and he's topless and his titties are out. That's in Winter Soldier. No, bro. It isn't? No, I'm okay. telling you it's in Winter Soldier or Civil War because that's when they find out that he was connected to the assassination the of Tony's parents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Winter right. Soldier's just when they hear about him and then he rears well, his head again. Well, one of my favorite scenes is in Winter Soldier and it's when he jumps on top of the car and, and yeah. struts his little ass down there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Okay. I think that's enough for characters. <laughs> like that's all I have that no, I, I really know. fuck with. But I can't think of anything else on here. You, you know, know what's yeah, I kind of yeah. fuck with Doctor Strange. I think Doctor Strange is he's cool. He's one of the most powerful. That's right? true. But he, I think he's annoying sometimes. No, but I, when I watched Doctor Strange, the movie again recently, oh, the first one's so good. Yeah. But when I rewatched it, I was like, fuck this guy. Cause you know how he's like the worst person yeah. ever in the beginning. And then like he treats Rachel McAdams Truly like shit. A Virgo man. Yeah. That's not a Virgo. You think he's a Leo? Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of the way he shows out, that's a Leo. Yeah. His work ethic, that's a Virgo. So maybe he's a Virgo rising. Virgo rising, I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> it's in the chart, but it's not his main son. Mm -hmm. His son is a Leo for fucking sure. If not, it's like an Aries. He's not as chaotic as most Aries, though. I'm just saying an Aries in the sense that they're very like hot, like all in or nothing at all. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Anywho, what else was in there? Do you have any crushes? Personally, no. What? <laughs> I never have crushes. And then did you say you had a hot take? Yes. My hot take and my brother gets so fucking mad when I say this every single time I say it. But I think that Black Widow could still be alive. No. <laughs> no. Okay. L hear me out. Okay. Loki opens the multiverse. 
He bring they bring back multiple fucking people. Gamora being one of them. They're coming no. out with the new Guardians, and the, Gamora's still alive because they redid it. Like, what, what does that mean in the in Endgame? I know, but she came out from the past, right? And it was because she sacrificed herself. That's why she's not going to come back. So did Black Widow. No, I'm saying I'm talking oh. about Black Widow, but I'm saying Gamora was sacrificed. That by doesn't make Anna. sense. That doesn't make sense, though. Why you would be distinguishing? Like okay. why No, I'm saying like, why would you be like, well, this person was murdered and this person chose to murder themselves. So like this person gets to come back, but this one doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. She was a witch, right? That's how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, the, I listen, I have no horse in the race. I'm probably wrong, but it makes me giggle to see how upset MCU fans get when I say that. Cause it's funny. You love to cause chaos well the beautiful part is that it, none of it's real so it doesn't matter at the end of the day, that's, the, that's the fun isn't it but like one time i watched this tiktok forever ago right and this guy was like these are my hot takes and one of them was that batman's not a superhero he's a mass vigilante yeah which i have been saying for fucking years i used to get the police do not fuck with him he's like literally carlo on my show he was like i saw a tweet that said batman's superpower is white privilege <laughs> which is fucking hilarious and true because he has no power he yeah. just has money and influence and he he just beats the shit out of people that's a vigilante right but i've batman, been saying the new batman so good that's true and also so scary why and was that movie so scary kind of sexy <laughs> <laughs> but not but anyways not wait, wait. so Rampant. yeah but the fact that like i saw this guy say it and i i literally commented on it and i was like i have been saying that he's a mass vigilante for so long and i feel so validated seeing somebody else say it because every time i said it there's always a batman fan in the fucking room that wants to go toe to toe no, with no. me about it his what about his no. gadgets what about his gadgets i go there well then they say what about tony stark and i'm all tony stark has that fucking shit in his chest batman doesn't have that that makes him super to an extent. So he, by, by pass, he gets a very thin pass to be a superhero. However. Well, and then Batman doesn't make his stuff. Iron Man does. And that's a super brain. And I said that I'm like, he has super yeah. like in, intellect, which is also insane. But anyways, I wrote that and my comment got a lot of likes. And then some guy was like, you're so fucking wrong. Like literally start getting so mad at me. And then I wrote back. It's funny. Cause he's not real. So who cares? And then he said, fuck you, fat bitch. And that was the end of that conversation. But my point being, it's funny because it's not real. Yeah, there you go. But that's why I stand by my very flimsy theory that Black Widow could still be alive. Because <laughs> we were going to be like, there's no way that that's possible because. No, no. She's not real. So it's She was okay. a witch, right? <laughs> <laughs> what okay. else is in there? Of the same one? Yeah. It's a crushes. Do you have any ships? People you want to ship together? I don't. Me and okay. <laughs> oh, people in the MCU. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, mm, no, oh. I got nothing. It also said songs. The only song I can think of from songs from Marvel. Yeah. Wait, like favorite songs in the MCU? What? There's no songs. Let me finish my thought. Oh. <laughs> Is that I like all of the soundtracks for Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. And okay. Thor Love and Thunder had a pretty yeah, good yeah, one. Yeah. But the only song I can think of that's MCU based is the one that everyone puts on TikTok. The slow one. Um the one that's like dun, 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 that one. Dun, 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 that one? No. I don't like know. Like the theme music? No. Oh. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. No. Yeah. I'm thinking of the slow one that Captain America dances with what's her name? Oh, do you want to hear something corny? Did you make a video to it? No. What? That's one of me and Billy's songs. Not because of those movies. So that's just you like, just love agent Carter. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> I'm a big Peggy fan. No, that's just, it's just by happenstance that have, we happen to like have that song as one. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at ZocDoc. So I don't know about you, but I personally don't really like going to the doctor, mainly because the part of making the appointment is really nerve wracking and I'm too old to have my mom make my appointments. But also 
when I have to make my appointments, they take way too long. And then they're like, okay, you can come in six months. What if in six months I don't feel like this anymore? So I'm super excited that we're partnering with ZocDoc. So you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat, but you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. So no more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. I actually really appreciate the patient review portion of it because it reminds me of like on Amazon when you're buying things. I always look at the reviews first because I don't believe anything until I see other people that have personally reviewed or used whatever I'm trying to get. So it's super exciting that people are able to review their doctors and give me a proper analysis of their interaction with them because as a woman, it's always really scary going to the doctor. I know I'm not alone in that. So make sure you go to ZocDoc dot com slash two idiot girls and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Now back to the episode. <laughs> this next one's from Kiana. She said for Drew, how did you know Peely was the one? And for Dason, how did you know your ex wasn't? <laughs> um, do you want to go first? So we end on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Um, there were a lot of reasons I realized that my ex wasn't the one, but mm-hmm. I think the biggest one was like, this sounds really fucked, but like anytime I ever imagined myself in my future life, I never saw that person there. That's T because neither did I. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I imagine like my dream. Do you dream- remember I told you that after you first broke up? Yeah. But if I imagine my dream life and I'm doing what I've always wanted to do, which is basically what I'm doing right now, I yeah. can never see that person there. And that's a sign. And I thought, well, I'm just imagining, you know. And then someone told mm-hmm. me, because I said on my story that my what my big three is, and then all of my three major planets are all in Sagittarius as well. Yeah. And they sent me this long explanation, basically saying, like, if you're with someone, you always feel like you can't do anything. So you just do whatever they want. And then you think you always can't, or just it's just something you have to be you like take notice of have like, to be conscious. Yeah. Of? So okay. that's why I'm like, OK, that's a new thing I need to work on this year. Yeah, is like yeah. if I do not do- losing yourself in a relationship. Yeah. And then only doing what they want. Yeah. And then um, like putting your all into them as opposed to like it being reciprocal. Like, yeah, it's like thinking like you can't be successful if you're with someone like you have to yeah. do whatever they're doing. Yeah. And they had it's a almost couple- like the most aggressive form of hyper fixation. Yeah. And making them your all. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a huge reason. I was like, I can't see this person in my future. Yeah. And then um, what else? Can you think of any other reasons? I was like, this isn't it. I can think of a ton. I just don't think it's f- smart for me <laughs> to prudent. talk about it. <laughs> I think that's it. That's like my biggest one. I, and then, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously dealt with a lot of things that year. And OK, this is kind of tea, but like I lost someone really close to me Mm -hmm. and then I went to the funeral by myself. So then my ex could stay behind and go play something. (laughs) They refused to go. That's important to know. Didn't go with me to bury someone that was really close to me. Yep. Um, and And to, and to give further context, my family and I were all willing to go. Yeah. Um, but Dason asked us not to, she's like, I, I just think maybe I should go by myself. So I had to go bury someone that was really close to me by myself. Well, I went with one of my friends because we were all close to this person. But Yeah, but I mean, like, your partner of five plus years, at this point, eight, is like, no, I have better things to do. That, yeah. that was probably the biggest red flag that I was, was thinking about everything. And then what happened happened. So Yeah. And now I see- look. Thank fucking God, dude. Yeah. And I just but wasn't, I, I wasn't as important to this person as they were to me. And you'll notice that super early on. That's also true. So I look back and I see a lot of moments where that was true. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, that's okay. Same. I saw many along the way. Sometimes, though, when I feel like when you elaborate a little bit further, I feel like sometimes people will be like, why didn't Drew say anything? Because I'm obviously very confrontational. And it wasn't always like that. But I will no, say within that it the, wasn't the last all, year, it was really bad. It wasn't always bad, but it wasn't as good as it could have been or should have been. been. And that's what I will say is the worst part. And for those of you who get it, get it. But when you get older and your siblings are with people and they're with them for a long time, sometimes you just want to be there for them. Like, even if there are certain things that you don't really like, you tend to think to yourself like, well, I mean, you, you voice the concern to them if it's really, really like huge 
but none of it was huge. It was just a bunch of little things. I also and I never like- felt like they were strong enough to hold up after like how long she had been with this person. So like what I would do is complain about it in private and get over it so that I didn't lash out towards that person because I love my sister and I want her to be happy. I also think our relationship has changed a lot since I've become single in where we can point out things we don't like about things that are going uh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Like I, mean? I can be more honest yeah. with, with her about, because the first thing I did once she was in a better place was tell her all the fucking shit I hated and all the shit that I felt like wasn't good enough for her or felt like shouldn't have been happening to her. Like there were lots of things. And it was one of those things where it was like a slow burn. Mm-hmm. So um, the best gift you could ever give someone like that is to be there for them. Um, even if they don't want you there at the time, it's just always to be there. And then as soon as she was ready to hear about it from me, I would tell her, but if she didn't want to hear it, I didn't tell her. Cause that's just what you do when you love someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just be there for them. But that's how I knew. There you go. Yeah. Thank God though. No shit. Yeah. yeah like thank fucking God, man. Could have been, it could have gone a completely different way and thank God it didn't. So, um, and then how did you know PP was the one? <laughs> Um, I would say there's like something of there. Okay. There's a lot of things that I share. There are some things that I won't. There's a very specific moment when I knew I won't share it because that's just something that's between he and I, but I will say this when I saw him do certain things, I was like, God damn, I love this person. Like, (laughs) Like, for example, his, um, my brother, when we first started dating, my brother was a baby, like, well, it's been five years now. So he was like 12, 13 when we first started dating. My brother was very eclectic. He still is to this day. Very sweet. He loves comic books. He loves superheroes. He loves like all these different things that, um, you know, are quirky and different for kids his age. Uh, I'm very protective of him. I would get, I got very nervous when we first, like, cause when one of our first times dating, I think we'd only been dating for like a week. He asked if he could come with me to my brother's football practice. And I said, yeah. So he came with us. And the first thing my brother asked him was, have you ever seen the teen beach movie? <laughs> and Billy doesn't watch anything. So he goes, no, actually I've never seen that. And he said, oh man, you got to watch it. They got a great soundtrack. And this is when he's a kid. And he asked him if he wanted to listen to his playlist that he had made. And he said, yeah. And he listened to the entire thing with headphones in with him. And he was so sweet and so patient and so loving towards him that it made me want to cry. And that was one of the reasons that I knew I loved him so much because it was his willingness to like, um, spend time with my family, get to know them. Yeah. Right? Well, we're naturally very like, um, protective of our family, like our, our like core core unit. Yeah. yeah. Especially my little brother. Cause he's so much younger than us and yeah. he grew up like our baby. So, and this is something too, that I think only Polynesian people or maybe just minority people in general, but specifically Polynesian people will get. Sometimes you do things not because you want to, but because your mom wants you to white people don't get that. Like, and that's not a drag. It's just a fact. Like, mm-hmm. I can't even tell you how many things that we've done as adults. Like, do I have to do it legally? No. Am I going to do it anyways? Cause my mom said it would mean a lot to her if I did it. Yeah. Right. Every single time. Um, I never had to explain that to him. And that was something I feared dating because that's just how someone families work. And I, and you know, some people, if you date outside of your race, a lot of times they don't understand that dynamic because they're like, if you don't want to do it, just tell your mom you're not going to go. Yeah, this is your area. <laughs> <laughs> this is your space. This is your area. That's literally, that's the story of my life dating. I'm like, my mom's going to eat you fucking alive. I'm not taking you Dude, home. That's the first thing I think. <laughs> that's I look the first thing like, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're going to piss my mom off and then I'm never going to see you again. Like, and that's why Billy was the first <laughs> man I ever brought home because I, I like was like, you know what? I think this is the one. I think he could stand the test, yeah. you know? And, um, <laughs> I never had to explain that to him. Like he asked me one time he was like, Hey, if you're, if you guys don't really want to do this, how come you guys are going? And I said, because my mom said so. And that's just kind of how it works. You know what I mean? And then, and then he said, okay. And he never asked me again. And it's just like that kind of shit just means so much to me because it's just a part of my family dynamic. 
uh, because that's how much we love our mom and how much we care about her and our family as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mom and dad, but especially my mom, because we're very matriarchal. So I just never had to explain that to him. And I never had to justify it to him. He mm -hmm. was just like, okay. And because he loves me so much and he loves my family and he knows it would mean a lot to me. So there you go. There you go. So we'll end on this one. This one's from Brianne. She said, Dang, I, it's been a long time. I know. She's like, I have DM'd you both and I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but please tell me your favorite foods and rides at Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. Quality question. So we'll start with Disneyland, our favorite food. Favorite food in Disneyland? Let me think. Favorite food in Disneyland? The Chicken House. You call it that. That's not what it's called. <laughs> Whatever. The, the place that serves fried chicken. <laughs> the chicken house is a restaurant. At Knott's Berry Farm. Berry Farm. And that place also rocks. That's Not Knott's Berry Farm. The chicken house. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, there's a place, a restaurant that serves fried chicken. Dude, I seen it going viral on TikTok. I'm all, don't give away your place. I know. That's one thing I should be gatekeeping. <laughs> but it's so fucking fire. It's like a, it's literally fried chicken, mashed potatoes, a biscuit. Uh, Something it's about, in that little pink. <laughs> something about biscuits like activates. I always say it activates my prey drive. Yeah, I just love biscuits. Weird. <laughs> it's in that little pink building that's right next to like the rocket ship thing. Like yeah. towards the entrance of Tomorrowland. It's right there. The pink one right there. Next to the nastiest bathrooms. That's what it's next to. <laughs> and the corn dog car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of good bathrooms at Disneyland. I was just about to say, that's a great question. What's the best bathroom at Disneyland? I don't even know if I want to tell them. What is it? I don't know. I have to think about it. <laughs> you know which one is shockingly not that bad, even though it's in a high traffic area? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid. The one in Frontierland? Yeah. Are On you the joking? I said, I said surprisingly not that bad. That I didn't bad. say it was terrible. I said, you know the one by the chicken place is fucking... No, you know which one's the worst? It's by the... Incredicoaster. <laughs> oh, that one, that that one smells like puke ass and poop. <laughs> no, the worst one I think... Wait, wait, wait. Is... Let me think if I can think. Okay. Which park is it in? Disneyland. Oh... Awesome. Billy always says this because <laughs> every time we go by that one, he always goes in there and he's always like, "This is the worst bathroom." <laughs> and he said, "I'm going to tell you what he said." Wait, oh, I know, it's the one by Space Mountain. No, 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 fuck, that one's really bad too. Yeah, which one? No, it's the one it, by the little restaurant that's like bell themed next to the carousel. Oh, oh, by the Snow White thing. Yeah, yeah, that one. He always says. <laughs> <laughs> that's true he you know, always <laughs> uses somebody goes this one's the worst bathroom <laughs> if you've ever been to lax <laughs> in the delta terminal there's a bathroom holy shit that's dude. right next to this technology store they sell airpod maxes in there. that's across from the pickup six <laughs> the food court <laughs> across across from the jimmy john's that's the bathroom Billy said, this smells like the delta terminal bathroom <laughs> the lax bathroom <laughs> That talk about a high traffic area. Yeah, that Delta bathroom in the LAX terminal or the Delta terminal. <gasps> no, I know a good LAX. bathroom. The one I went to one the last time we were there in um in the Star Wars land. I went to one in there. Oh, I've never used the. In the bathroom, there. or sorry, the the sinks. They're like troughs. Oh, I have used that. They're one. pretty nice. That one's nice. Yeah, and then the no, one the one, the one by, by the Cars Land. That one's pretty nice. Oh, Every, that one's like my Flo's Cafe. Everyone's going to be like, that's not what it's called. It's Radio the one. Springs over there. <laughs> <laughs> the one by Flo's Cafe. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, one, that one rocks. I took a picture of myself using that bathroom once and people were like, which bathroom are you using? Because some of them are terrible. And I said, I'll never tell you which one I'm using right now. You know which one we use a lot too is it's in Disney California Adventure. It's the one by the little Hollywood area. Yeah, that one's all right. That one's okay. It yeah. doesn't smell like ass in there, but That's it's dirty. True. You know which one's the cleanest one? The one when you right when you get off the escalators. Oh yeah, that the tram. That one's like you would think that would be the worst one. Maybe by the end of the night, it's terrible. No, but I've been in there at night. It's pretty yeah, fine. that one's really nice. It's yeah. always clean. Yeah, you, before you get on the tram, you go. I like pee. how we were supposed to be talking about food when now we're talking about the best restrooms. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Back to the my favorite. Well, you said your favorite food is the chicken house, the that's, fried chicken. That's place. what we call it. Yeah. I guess that's I'll, my new one. Yeah, I would say. I'm trying to think what vegan stuff I've had there. You've had that Impossible Burger at Buzz Lightyear's Cafe. 
No, they don't do a burger. It's like a bean wrap. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Bean, it's called a bean freak wrap. Uh, <laughs> that's um, what they say when they give it to her. They're like, here you go, you bean freak. And then they bean me in the head with it. <laughs> here you go, you bean freak. That one's okay. I don't know. The vegan food at Disneyland's kind of whack, to be honest. In California Adventures, it's better. Jason is not a vegan. She's a vegetarian when we go to Disneyland. <laughs> Because she does. Did I saw this girl? She said, "If you're a vegetarian, you know you have a cheat meal, like something you eat." And this girl stitched it and said, "When I read those comments, I thought y'all were gonna be like, oh, sometimes I eat marshmallows or I eat high chews because it has gelatin in it, which is animal fat." Yeah. She goes, "Some of you are saying a McChicken." How do you cut out? I don't eat meat when I go to Disneyland at all. No, yeah, that's why I said. That's why I said she she becomes a vegetarian. Honestly, my favorite food in both parks is the popcorn. I don't give a fuck <laughs> what's going on. I'm going to get popcorn. That's true. The popcorn's pretty fire. The last time we went to Disneyland, I almost passed out. So then I had to sit off a couple rides. <laughs> <laughs> and I was feeling so, like, sick. Like, I just felt so, um, I felt like I was, I literally forgot what I was saying that <laughs> sentence. Oh, my God. I felt, I just felt like I was going to pass out. And it made me feel nauseous, which I hate feeling like that. Mm-hmm. But then when I was sitting off the second ride I was missing, um, I smelled the popcorn and I was like, that smells good. So Billy bought me a, a thing of popcorn and that shit brought me back to life, bitch. It's so good. It, it hits every time. I just never really get it, but yeah. it's and really then good. Favorite, so my favorite food in both parks is popcorn. <laughs> and my favorite, right? My favorite food is the fried chicken in Disneyland right okay. now. It used to be, uh, it used to be those chicken tenders in Frontierland. Yeah, um, but, but a I've little Western on. cafe. Yeah. yeah, but I've moved on. I used to like the corn dogs. Can't eat them anymore. Yeah. Uh, in California, favorite food? I would say the clam chowder bowls used to be oh, the move. Deans. That used to be the move for me. I would say. Now you like the little. Um, the Asian food. restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, they have a really good oh, teriyaki at chicken. The, at the Mexican restaurant that they have there, they do these potato tacos. Those are vegan and those are fire. I like those a lot. Oh, that's right. That's right. In that same little area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, Okay. Anyways, next. Favorite Favorite rides. Okay. Let's say our favorite ride at Disneyland at the same time. Ready? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Indiana Indiana Jones. Jones. Period. And then in California Adventure. Do you know? Wait. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy. (laughs) Period. There you go. Indiana Jones, some people fucking hate that ride. I it, Every love time that ride. I go on it, it feels like it's the first time I've ever been on it. It's yeah. so funny. And it's also like, I would say Indiana Jones and a close second is the Matterhorn. Yes. I love yes. the Matterhorn. People hate that ride too, but I don't give a fuck. The fact that it's so violent is what makes me laugh. I know. And if you're ever with me, first of all, someone was like, I can't even imagine what that laugh sounds like on a roller coaster. You're right. You can't. It's unbelievable. But secondly, whenever I sit next to Billy on roller coasters, every time I, <laughs> if you ever oh, sit next to him. Space Mountain. I like that one too. Oh yeah, that one's fun too. But if you ever sit next to him, it always sounds like he was like asleep and then he woke up and he was on a roller coaster. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like it's like the first time he's ever experienced one. And he's like, what the hell? Like he just doesn't remember. And we've been on each ride mm-hmm. millions of times. So that's why those ones are my favorite too, but they're also just super fun. There you go. And every time we ride them, it's like the first time we've ridden them. Mm-hmm. So we start laughing. We're laughing because it's fun, but then we start laughing because we like forget certain things and I start getting kind of scared. Yeah. Like when you get on the Matterhorn, I always forget that that thing fucking chases you up the hill. It's scary. But the way it sounds when it's running, that's how Squid sounds. When he gets <laughs> his zoomies, he's like, <laughs> like yeah. that. That's literally, that's. It, I bet you anything they recorded squid having zoomies and then put it in that yeah. ride. Give us our, give her the royalties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Heather wants to know, cause we got a lot of the, honestly, this question was asked quite a few times. What are your go-to alcohol drinks on a night out? Um, weed. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Richard, that's Richard. mine. Um, if I have to pick, I normally like like a fun drink, like a fun mixed drink. Oh, a, a chunky monkey. <laughs> Sex on the beach. You know what's crazy is sex on the beach is actually a great Those drink. Are so good. They're so fucking good. And Do you, you feel like be- a silly Billy ordering yeah. it? Yeah. And you know what's worse? When you order it and they go, we don't make those here, which makes no fucking sense. It's literally a regular. Don't even get me started. Anyways. You love a good, uh, what's that one? Moscow Mule. That was my hyperfixation for a while. I'm kind of over it now. Okay. If I'm at dinner, I'm going to drink an espresso martini. I tried to get on the bandwagon. I couldn't. If we're going out and we're at bars, I'm going to do a, a vodka Red Bull. 
Ugh. I know. That just that I, I I taste a little bit of that and I have taste throw up. I have flashbacks to my war, war flashbacks. My war zone days <laughs> in college when I was hustling drinks. But I love a good seltzer because everything hurts my fucking stomach. So I'm always drink if I were going out, I drink seltzers and then I do a vodka red bull out. I can't do seltzers. Double. You get a double and then you drink two of those, you're good for the rest the of the The last time I got truly fucking blackout on seltzers was like I was drinking those mango white claws. Those are white claws are nasty. I'm I know tired of people pretending they're not. I know, but that's all there was. I didn't want to drink beer because it's a little too heavy for like how much I was planning on drinking that night. I was like, I'm not. I'm gonna get drunk, but not too drunk. I got so fucked up that I like whenever I get that fucked up, I like disappear and I go lay down to beer go to sleep. Beer is also nasty. Stop pretending you. Like I it. like beer, but it just depends. Oh, do you also love sports <laughs> and football and pizza and touch my ass. <laughs> Wait, we have to end on the nail one. I forgot. Oh yeah, that's that's the that's what pick me's recite at all their meetings. They say that that yeah. they chant that I, before their meetings. I like beer. I like football. All I want is someone who will watch football with me and touch and touch my butt and buy me pizza. There you go. And it's that picture of that blonde skinny white girl on the white comforter with oh. that big pizza and a heart and then she has that big glass of wine. And you're like quirky. Yeah, have you ever seen that picture? It's a big yeah, Tom I thought you were talking about the one where it's that Facebook picture of that girl, and she's going like, and she has like a bag on her head, like a chip bag on her head. They're at like a Seven <laughs> Eleven, and she's like, she's crazy. And the coffee caption's like, I can't take her anywhere. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of our biggest inside jokes with Adam. Girl, you're like, crazy. Are, you, are you guys recording me? That's what he always does. <laughs> he acts like one of those people. Okay, but if you were to do it from the same. He's angle. like, wait, are you recording me? Wait, no, tag me. Tag me if you are, though. Wait, I'm so embarrassed. Wait, let me see. Okay, post it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut like, up. That's one of the funniest jokes he's ever told me. Like, he, he just started doing that voice one day, and now we do it. If we do it, we'll do it for 20 minutes. Yeah. And sometimes I think people think we're being for real because it won't stop. Yeah. That's the best part of a bit. It's just it doesn't end. It never ends. Um, What were we even fucking talking about? Oh, beer. I, I like beer. I just like, if I have one, I'll have one and that's it. Like, cause then I'm it. hungover for the next 15 days of Don't my life. Even fucking like at get pride, I did two tall boys and I was like, who the fuck do I think I am? Heartburn, like a dragon blowing fire out of my mouth. It was so like, disgusting. I'm one of those people that they're like, let's do shots. And if someone gives me the shot, I'll literally hand it to somebody else. Cause I will I not know. drink it. I just can't anymore. This most recent time when I, that was like the worst hangover I've had in like five years. I did too many shots. It's just the feeling the next day is never worth it I to know. me. Like it's just never worth it to me. I, and I think it's just cause I did, I went so fucking hard in the pain yeah, for so I did too. long I did too. that I was like, and then once I started, once I discovered the devil's lettuce, I was like, I don't need to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't need to drink anymore. I yeah, can just like do when this. We went out that one time and you came with us. You were just high the whole time. Yeah. No better way to do it. <laughs> I'm just as much fun either way. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I'll have like one drink though. So I would say a fruity fun drink. Yeah. Like coconut peach, like mm. anything with like, um, I love a margarita. I know they're like, it's December. I'm all, can you make it please? <laughs> love I've seen margarita? bartenders like talk about when people want margaritas in December. I'm all, what's the drink? What is it? A whiskey? Like what the fuck are you on? An old fashioned. <laughs> since when are oh they? Oh my gosh. Remember we tried since old fashioned in seasonal? Florida? <laughs> At the party we went to in Florida? When? The one at that fancy hotel with the boat. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I took one sip and I almost threw The way up. I was like, ah! <laughs> like, so I'm when? like, that'll put some hair on your chest for sure. What are you trying to kill me? That's why I could never be a pygmy because I can't do shit like that. Do you have any scones? Give me the, give me the <laughs> fruitiest, sweetest, yeah. most like flamboyant looking drink. Mm -hmm. I'll fucking take it every time, bitch. Yeah, I right. don't care. I don't care. Wine? Don't give it to me unless it's a Riesling. I don't want it. I don't want it. I like white wine, but I hate red wine. <laughs> I hate it. Me too. You can't make me. I'll drink a Pinot, but like I prefer a really, really sweet wine, but I don't really like rosé. I like rosé. Rosé is good. I, I, don't, I don't love it, but Riesling, oh. I when saw I someone just, say they're new at drinking. How do I get over it? You just keep drinking. Oh, like the taste? Yeah. Yeah, you just... You just keep drinking. I know. When you drink it, you're like, I can't believe people want to do this. It's fucking ass. Mm -hmm. I know. Trust me. I know. I'm 29. I, <laughs> I, I know. That's why I said beer. I was like, I thought I was never going to get over that taste. I was like, this is fucking garbage. Mm -hmm. But eventually you get over it. I got this peach Moscato from Trader Joe's and I cracked it open last night. I have one too, bro. Did I drink it? Is it, it the one in the frosted glass? 
I have to look at it. It might be. It has a silver top. Yeah, but I don't think it was frosted. Mine well, had like lines down frosted. the side. Mm-hmm. Oh, mine didn't have that. Anyways, I drank some of it last night and I was like, I'm always like, are you okay? Mom? I'm kind of buzzed. <laughs> some of this wine. I so have a wine good. that I really want to drink, but I love to smoke. So that's why I try not to like I, know, mix. I wish I had more wine. Maybe I'll go to the store, drink some wine tonight. Dude, I don't give a damn what anybody says. If you want to try wine and you're like, it's hard for you to get past the barefoot, fucking taste. Barefoot. Barefoot Riesling. Riesling. Girl. Put that bitch in the freezer or not the freezer, the fridge. If you put it in the freezer, put a timer because it will explode. But if you put it in the fridge, leave it for a few hours. Ice cold. Tastes like apple juice. And it's like $8. The worst part about those as you get older, like one, like I can have half a glass and I'm not drunk. I need to have like, drink the whole thing and then I'm still not drunk. Well, I can't relate to that right now only because I'm such a lightweight. And you know what? I can't. I why. just lied. I'm a lightweight too. <laughs> Also, there's nothing wrong with being a lightweight. Yeah. The way that's done, that's a pick me thing too. And they're like, oh, I could drink so much and I don't even feel a thing. Yeah. That's, that's like pick me shit. If you're a lightweight, you save so much money. Like it's, you have so much fun because you only have two and that's it. When you have to drink 18 to get fucked up and then it catches up to you late. Trust me. It's awful. Trust me. It's horrible. It's horrible. I used to, I, the way I used to hold alcohol was concerning and now I'm like two drinks and I'm hung over the next yeah. day. So I know on Christmas Eve, I had two of those little Oza sangrias. <laughs> I was like, fuck those up. are fucking fire. Yeah. The Oza, I love like, sangria. Sangria is so good. Sangria is fire. Joe Jonas really put his whole pussy in that whole brand. Jonas is in that there. whole Jonas is in that fucking brand. Oza is so fire. I the really white like one, them. especially. Is really yeah. Good. The white one's fucking the red good. one's good. But the white one, when better. I got the PR box, I drank the two white ones and I was like, Ooh, <laughs> like getting feeling tipsy yeah, after two. We, we went to Kewani. You picked me up, and I was like, "Dude, I've only had two O's." When I'm like fucked up, <laughs> I'm so fucked up. I probably don't remember. I, was I don't remember. Up. I was probably fucked up. Yeah. So if you can't get past the taste, don't force yourself to. But there if you go. you will, if you <laughs> the more hours you put in, the more you'll get used to it. I promise. Okay, this last one's from Amy. This is actually the last one we're gonna do, guys. And she wants to know, how do you wipe with those nails? I don't. Wipe what? <laughs> I just walk around with poop in my butt all day. It's really simple. Um, when you wipe your ass, <laughs> do you stick your fingers up like this and, and drag your fingers across your butthole? No, right? You ball and then you wipe. It's quite simple. Or That's it. Do you use just one piece and then your fingers will poke Yeah, like, do you, do you hold it like this, like, scissor it between and then go like this, so then it all, all the poop gets on your fingers? No, right? That's how. <laughs> like, that, that, I, that's, like, one of my most asked questions because I always have really long nails. Yeah. And Jason has long nails, too. Yeah. But mine are longer. Mine are the longest they've probably ever been. I don't like that question because it's almost always, like, I could never, I could never. Not that I'm saying you're doing that. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying like when other people have asked me. I don't wipe. I like, stand above the toilet and I just shake my ass and hope whatever's I, supposed I to poop, come out comes I out. I poop like how squid poops in the backyard with no wiping. I just, I hunch over and it's the most unflattering looking angle. And, and I, I look. Make sure to make eye contact with I whoever's look, near us. I look over my shoulder to make sure they're watching my back. And then I just take a shit on the lawn. Does he do that thing where dogs like wipe their feet really fast on the ground after yeah. they shit? Yeah. What is that? It's like they're trying to bury it, but they're not. Like Darla does it. It makes me laugh every single time. The way she does it is crazy. My <laughs> dog doesn't do it that way. But like he does do it. And sometimes he does it with his pee and he'll step in his fucking pee. Nice. So then he'll he'll step You taught in him it. to do that though. Because that's how you go to the <laughs> That's bathroom. how I pee. Yeah, there you go. That's like mother like son. <laughs> but it's like so Somebody's got to do it. He'll step in it and it like goes up on his leg. And then he goes. And I'm like, why would you fucking do that? So in I, what? Poop? No, no, no. In his pee, sometimes if it's wet outside, oh, like and it if puddles, it's been raining, yeah. yeah. So I have to bring him in. I have to fucking wash his feet off. And then he just sits there like. <laughs> but yeah, he does the little. Yeah. Pond. My cats do this thing now where if the litter box isn't rotating, they'll come scream at me to go fix it. <laughs> I just did it last night and YB went in there twice. That man be shitting. One thing about him, he's going to poop. Yeah. All right, friends, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Okay, so maybe we'll, in the future, we'll do an episode on family bits, but we'll see. We'll keep you posted on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And again, please come see us on tour. We just released a bunch of new tickets, so then everyone's able to come. Mm-hmm. You can get them at twoidiotgirls.com. And yes. we'll see you there.
But other than that, if you like the audio version of this, you can listen to all of our other episodes on Everywhere You Could Stream Podcast. And the video version is always on our YouTube channel. But we love you and we hope you have a great week. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you.